everybody, I am Dee. I'm from the beautiful Bavaria in Germany. You know Bavaria, maybe? Land of beer? Land of, <laughs> land of the Oktoberfest? <laughs> Honestly, I've never been to Oktoberfest. But also, Bavaria, land of the pretzels. <laughs> we have this thing. It's called a Kürbiskernbreze, which is a very German word, I know. So I'm teaching you German today. And it's basically a pretzel with pumpkin seeds on it. It's delicious. It's amazing. It's completely random. Doesn't have anything to do with inertia. But I just wanted to let you know this thing exists. <laughs> and it makes our world a better place. You know? OK. So other than being like a pretzel expert, I'm also a software developer at Beyond Code, where we make tools for developers. So tools for you. You might have heard of this Tinkerwell thing, or Expose, or SenseDeck, our newsletter servers, or this little thing called Hurt, you know? Taylor released this yesterday. I don't know what it is. And we work a lot with inertia at Beyond Code. For example, SenseDeck, everything you see, it's inertia. So I am pretty familiar with it. But you might not, so I suggest we start with a few basic facts about inertia, so we all start at the same point. What is inertia? Inertia has existed for some time, but it's still a kind of new approach to connect your front end, view, react, or svelte, with your back end. Laravel or Ruby on Rails, but we're at Laracon, so this is Laravel today. With that, it's important to say that inertia is not replacing any of the technology you're already using. It more works as some kind of glue that ties together your front end and back end to create the so-called modern monolith. And to be honest, when I hear monolith in terms of software development, I cringe a little because I'm thinking legacy code, I'm thinking not flexible, I'm thinking not developer friendly, but I assure you, Inertia is amazing, it's very developer friendly, and it's so fun to work with. But how does it compare to the things you might already know? How does it compare to Laravel's Blade? I am sure we all have learned and used Blade at some point, and in its very core, to make it very simple, Blade is HTML code manipulated by PHP on the server and then sent back to the client. The client is a browser in most cases, and this browser renders this HTML and CSS. This results in a full page load every time we click a link or post a phone. Blade is simple, it's great documentation, easy to learn, doesn't have any reactivity, but in a lot of cases, it's absolutely sufficient. A single page application in the non-inertia way, completely different topic. If you have never implemented such thing, you could, for example, boot the view framework from within your app blade file. But after that, every time you need something from the server, from the database, you have to talk to an API. And this API will return, in most cases, JSON. This JSON will then be picked up by the view framework, which is handling a dynamic update of your page controls. There we have no full page reloads. And this is why SBAs feel like super sleek, like native apps. And they are great, but they come with a few downsides. You have to take care of state and session management in the front end. You have to take care of client-side routing and API routing. And since you're sending back and forth lots of data, you need to take care that this data is properly high rated. These are not red flags that you should never do an SPA like that. It's just a lot of stuff that you need to wrap your head around in addition to the thing you're actually building. And this is where Inertia comes in, kind of saves the day. <laughs> Inertia is a single page application. 
and it feels like a single page application, but you don't need an API and here is why. For this first initial page request, the server will return HTML, page assets, view components, JSON data, all kinds of stuff that is necessary for this very first page. And this will return in a full page load, that's obvious. But after that, Inertia can intercept your request. My microphone is gone? Okay. After that, sorry, Inertia can intercept your requests to tell the server in the back end that this is an inertia request and it needs to handle this one a little different. In this case, it will just send down the updated page data as JSON and maybe some new page components, some new view components. Inertia in the front end then just swaps out that page components and this is where the sleek feeling of an SPA comes from. And you don't even an API, by the way, it's nice. <laughs> But to be honest, I love APIs. I'm pro API, but n not in this context. So you want to see some code? I need a sip of water because AC is going crazy. Before we go to the code, we go to the demo app for today, which is the developer's journey travel blog. This is an Jetstream application, because that's just the fastest way to get started with Laravel and Inertia. But as a side note, you don't have to use Jetstream if you don't like it. You can install Inertia as well, just stand alone with Laravel. So how does Inertia page get served? What is the basic flow? When a request gets to a Laravel app, it will go to one of the routes files. And since we're coming from a client browser, we will go, most cases, to the web route file. So we have our landing page route defined here, and it's served by the show landing page controller. It's a pretty simple and short controller, but it already shows, just scrolling this up a bit, a crucial part of inertia. Instead of returning a play view file or a JSON response, this controller returns the result of the inertia render function. This function takes two arguments. The first is the name of the view component that you want to have rendered, and the second is an array of page parameters that you want to pass down to this page. In this case, a few blog posts that I just renamed to travel stories because we all had blog posts a lot in our presentations. When we now go to the view component of this landing page, it's view three, just in case you're wondering, you may see that we have a view property here, travel stories. And the data we sent down from the controller is hydrated into this view property, which is pretty nice because we can work with this view property like with any other view property. So for example, we can pass it down to another component here, which is rendering the block cards on the landing page just by looping over the data, go away. And that is a basic flow of inertia. It's not so different from what you may already know. So what is the whole thing with the full page reload and the not full page reload? How do we navigate and get around in our app? On this page, there is a little navigation on top. And you might notice two identical links. They go to the exact same page, same route, same controller but they are implemented in two different ways. That is the first link. It's implemented with standard HTML href link, nothing fancy. Second, this link is implemented with the inertia link component. This component comes with the view three adapter for inertia. But if you're using React or Swelp, there is a version in the respective adapter. This component is calling a function, like deep down in our node modules file. I don't, I don't show this one to you, but I have an example. This component is, show, is, is calling the router wizard function. The router import is coming with this view three adapter as well. And it's basically for everything routing in your Inertia app. You can do get requests and post requests and patch requests, everything you can imagine. The wizard function is just a nice little wrapper around the get requests, so we can just wizard pages, that's the point. 
to actually understand what's the difference between these two links, we can take a look into the network tab. The content of this page is not very interesting for us right now, but the network tab is. At first, I will click on the standard HTML link, and we see what happens. A lot happens. We have 31 requests. We have all kinds of stuff. We have junk JavaScript files. We have view components. It's just a lot of page load. Let's compare this back to the landing page, and let's compare this to this link component link. That's less. This is because inertia is doing, is, is uh, sorry, inertia is detecting that we, for example, already have some components that we need. We already have the CSS file in the front end. So it only, re, uh, it only requests the components that are necessary for that page. For example, like a chart view file and a chart library. And this drastically reduces your page load, of course, and this is where the snappy feeling of an SPA comes from, because we don't have this full page reload. When you work with inertia, you will work with page data, because you need data on your page. And what is page data? Page data on the initial request is injected as this huge JSON string in the HTML. And from there, the front-end framework, view for example, can just pick it up and work with it. After that, page data is passed down as a JSON response, like here. And it contains all kinds of stuff. We have chat stream here, so these are chat stream permissions. We have a user object, at least we would have if we would have a locked-in user, and error bags. These are for form handling. And of course, we have controller-specific data just for this page, with a, it's like the statistics beta, data down below. How do we pass down page data? I already showed you this part because it's pretty simple. It's the second parameter in the inertia render function. For the landing page, I'm passing down this resource collection of travel stories. But why am I using a resource? It would be less code, and we always go for less code, if I just don't use this collection, but this simple eloquent query. I want the latest three travel stories, and I want them sorted by the latest, and since I want to show like the author name of this post on the landing page, I'm joining in the users table. So let's go to the landing page, and we can have a look at the view dev tools. They are very helpful when you work with inertia because it's like, I mean, it's better overviews than just looking at JSON data. And these are the page properties for the landing page, the travel stories. And when we take a look at the first one, you see that's a lot of stuff. We have the whole content of that blog post, and we have like the whole user object. We only need the user's name. Of course, I could do a custom query and joining some tables, truncating some strings, but you see where I'm going. We can use the wonderful things that Laravel provides us and use a JSON resource for that. And this latest travel story resource for the landing page is doing exactly that, just providing a shorted version of the content, for example, and only the user's name. If we re reload our DevTools again, we see that's better. Of course, in this example, it doesn't really matter if we're passing down the full eloquent query thing or the slimmed down version. But as soon as your application grows larger, more complex, you will get to a point where your page load, size and speed matters. Other than page load, sensitive data might be another reason why you want to take a closer look what you're passing down to the front end. Of course, Laravel will never pass down a user's post password unless you force it to. <laughs> but maybe you don't want to expose the user's email address on this very public page, just to click in the DevTools away, just saying. So when you work with page data and inertia, keep a look what you're passing down to the front end. Page data is incredibly helpful. And 
we can, it may be that you have data in your application that you want to show or need on every page for whatever reason. In this example, I want to show the total distance of the travels of the developers here on the landing page, but also in the footer of every page down below. I could pass down this data from every controller, but this is messy and we don't do messy with Laravel. I could do a custom middleware for that, which is pretty much what we can do with Inertia. Inertia comes with the handle Inertia requests middleware. This middleware is taking care of a few things, for example, asset versioning, but it also provides the share method. And this share method allows us to share data with every page, regardless where we are at in our application. So in this example, I just summed up the distance data from the database, put them into a cache, gave them the key, that's it. When we now take a look into, uh, oh, one thing, one very cool thing, I already forgot about it. This shared data doesn't have to be explicitly defined in a view component. This is the footer component for this page, and you might you notice no view property here, but there is a sneaky little import on top of this page. The use page function returns an instance of the initial inertia page. And this page contains a props attribute which contains all the data that is available for that page. It's very handy for shared data. When we take a look into the view dev tools now again, this is the landing page again. So we have the landing page component down below and we have the page specific properties right here. If we go one level up to this inertia tag, this is the initial page and it's containing the props for this page, so the total distance that we just shared, as well as the controller-specific data. When you use shared data, two things to keep in mind. First up, use sparingly, but this goes without saying, I hope. And second, this data is literally merged. It's an array merge in this function with your controller-specific data. So you might use a namespace or something, so you avoid messed up or lost data. So, I might have said data today a few times, <laughs> and I hope no one is counting, but I'm afraid this counter is going up a bit more because we're going to my favorite topic about inertia. This is magic. I'm talking about partial reloads. What is a partial reload? Well, instead of an initial load, a partial reload can request a subset of data from within the same page. For example, you have a page with data that can be filtered or sorted, like a list or a chart. And on initial request, the controller will load and evaluate all data that we need for this page, kind of obvious. If you then change a filter or a sorting in the front end, Inertia can request a partial reload of this page. So the controller returns only the data that is affected by this filter change. Inertia in the front end then merges the updated data with the cache data in the front end, and this drastically reduces your page load as well. Pretty cool. How a partial reload behaves in detail depends on how you define it in the controller. This is a theory part we get to the practical part just in a minute. There are three ways to do so. First up, simple, just key and function, whatever. This data will get passed on initial visit always, every time. It's optional for a partial visit, so only if you request it but it will always be evaluated, even if you don't request it. The second way is using a PHP error function. This data is also passed on initial visit and it's optional for partial visit, so it behaves like the first one, but it's only evaluated when requested. So that's good for like data heavy operations. 
third option looks a bit confusing. We need the PHP error function again, and we wrap this one in the inertial lazy wrapper. This data is never passed down an initial visit. It's optional for a partial visit, and only then it's evaluated. You following me? Yes? Good. <laughs> Let's see what this actually does and what cool things we can build with that. So we finally get to the content of this statistics page. And it contains a few numbers because we are developers and we love numbers. Like the total distance, we have this one from the shared data, number of countries visited, number of developers taking part, and a little chart that is plotting the distance. Down below, there is also a detailed travel list. We will talk about this one in a second. When we take a controller, when we take a look at the controller of this page, this is our inertia render function, and it's basically the same example that I had like just a minute ago in the keynote. With that, we can assume that on an initial load of this page, we get the user count, we get the char data, but we don't get a list data because this one is wrapped inside the inertial lazy function. So let's check out if it's true what I'm saying. Let's go, sorry, that shouldn't be a full re reload. There we go. So this is our JSON for this page, chat stream things again. You see here, user count, char data, we scroll down, no list data. So far so good. So let's perform a partial reload on this page. So let's clear that. And I can change the time range of this chart here. Default is the last seven days. Let us get passed down on initial load. But I am interested in, I don't know, the last 30 days. Here is our partial reload. A chart is replotted. And when we take a look at this JSON response, only chart data. And of course, the name of the component, so Inertia knows where we're at right now. How do we request this partial reload from the front end? The on change handler from this select box is this change range function. And here we have our router import again, and it's performing a visit to the same page we are already at and it's passing the desired range as a page parameter. And the thing that is like resolving into the partial reload is this only key, because we only want to request the chart data and the current range. The current range is just for the label. A nice thing that, can inertia, that inertia can do with a partial reload is to preserve the scroll position, so after the load it doesn't jump, the page doesn't jump back to the top. And that's already it. That's a partial reload in inertia. Yeah, I think it's nice. <laughs> so we have this travel list function. Down below, uh, sorry, function list, it's a list. Let's say it's a list that a lot of data, accumulated data, and might have added a sleep function in PHP so it actually takes some time to load. Heard is just so fast. And this load button is basically doing the exact same thing as before. It's calling the load travel list function, and since we don't pass a page per uh, a get parameter in this case, we can use the router reload function. It's just shorter since we stay on the same page. We're only requesting the list data, and I'm using two callbacks here just to show and hide the loading spinner. Same thing as before. But what if I want to show this list every time someone visits this page? Because it's a lot of work to click on this button, you know? But also, I don't want to make the user wait for this data to see the whole page. Because like the chart is up there and the list is down there, they have to scroll. And there's a really handy thing we can do. You might remember, this list data is not passed down on initial visit. And we can make use of the unmounted hook in view. This unmounted hook, to make it very simple, this is not a view talk, this is executed when the page component is, let's say, kind of visible. And then we call the low travel list function. And there's a very cool thing happening then. I'm a fan of the network tab. We click 
on the link again. So we trigger reload of this page. The first request is already there. The second request for the list data is pending. It takes a few seconds, but here you can see that's our list data. And this initiator column in the network tab is telling us what function initiated that request. This xhrjs file is basically this link component that I just clicked on. And here we see this index view file. When we take a look here in the sources, that's our unmounted hook. That is triggering that request. You can do very cool things with that. For example, you have a user dashboard of a user logs in and you have some like data heavy stuff going on in the back end you want to show the user. You can show them the dashboard. You can show them some simple data. And for the data heavy stuff, you just show a loading spinner and wait for the request to finish. It's very nice. So, uh, not that one, that one. That was a lot, I know. So here's the summary for your brain, what you did learn today. You learned how inertia works under the hood, how page wizards work, what's the whole thing with full page reload and not full page reload. You learned how to improve your page data and how you can share data across components. And of course, you learned that I am a huge fan of partial reloads. But Inertia can do even more. Even Inertia can do persistent layouts that can keep state. It provides an awesome form handling and even an option for server-side rendering. For that, I suggest you go to the official inertiajs.com documentation or, of course, you go to Laracast and watch one of the awesome Inertia courses. If you're an Inertia pro and you did not learn anything new today, thank you very much for listening anyway. <laughs> but I suggest you check out the book of Boris, advancedinertia.com. You will learn something new. Promise, it's awesome. That's it from me today. Thank you for enduring data one trillion times. Have a nice day. All right. Way to go. Okay, so the first question I have is from Rissa, and she says, when it comes to pretzels, what is the best dipping sauce? The dipping sauce? I, you can say none. Apparently the answer is none, so that's the Rissa question. Don't put okay. that on me. Okay, so like a default thing in Bavaria is just butter. Okay. But I don't like butter because okay. I'm weird, crazy person, weird. Uh, I enjoy hummus. Hummus, okay. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, I like that answer. Second question, when it comes to inertia, not pretzels, when it comes to inertia, um, do you find yourself doing TypeScript much um, with the underlying frameworks? And if so, is there a way to share those types between back end down through inertia to the front end? Uh, I do, it depends on the project. If okay. it's quite simple, I don't do TypeScript. But SenseTech, for example, it's pretty, uh, pretty complex. So we're using TypeScript there as well. And we're typing everything. And yeah, so it works good with Inertia as well. Perfect. Yeah. Y'all, give it up for D. Thank you.